Hi, this is Paul with Equipped Expedition Outfitters. Today I want to talk to you about some of the similarities and some of the differences between the National Luna Portable Power Pack and the DC-25 Power Pack. They share a lot in common, but there are some distinct differences that we should probably point out. First of all, let's talk about the power packs in general. Both of these units are ideal solutions for you if you're looking to put an auxiliary battery in your vehicle, but don't have any uh, location under the hood, under the vehicle, that makes sense for that. These would be wonderful in the back of any pickup, van, SUV, uh, for use as an auxiliary power solution. Uh, let's take a look at both of them and what you get. Uh, each one of them uh, is uh, contained in a box. The box is the same size for either of them. These boxes are designed to hold a group 31 size battery on the inside of them. They both have a tie down bracket that's based out of the, the bottom of the unit. They also have recessed locations for bolting this down into a flat, uh, a stable base uh, within a vehicle uh, area. They both come with a set of cable that has a red Anderson coupler on the end of it. This cable is what they call a uh, 16 millimeter squared cable, which is roughly the size of a number four wire. Uh, that's plenty to run either of the systems. Uh, the Red Anderson, uh, of course, plugs into the front of either of them. Both of the units come with a set of hardware. The hardware includes the lugs for the wires, an inline fuse, battery terminals, all things necessary to make these work. Uh, the DC-25 has the same system. That is all that's necessary for you to hook either of these systems up. Two wires run positive and negative to your main battery of the vehicle. Both of these systems will work on there. Um, what they also have in, in common is the use of uh, power distribution management right on the face of the units themselves. We have a, a scale for the auxiliary battery as well as the main battery. That, that gauge is right up here on the DC-25. You have power takeoff locations uh, for Hella, cigarette lighter, USB, uh, and uh, others built into this unit. Same as the face that is on this one here. Uh, you also have the ability to run a remote uh, control from this unit through a cable to a dual battery controller up in the cab of the vehicle. That is possible through the monitoring system on the DC-25. Different units, same, same relative uh, capabilities there. There is a power takeoff uh, here with the Gray Anderson coupler that in this unit, you can run a solar panel through a solar controller and into this unit. This one here has an integrated MPPT solar controller built into it. So you can run up to, it's a 25 amp uh, controller, so up to 375 watts of solar panel as an output on this machine. It has a solar input plug built right into the face of it. Uh, from there, they change a little bit as far as how the batteries are charged. Now that's the real difference between these two machines. This machine uses the current directly off of the terminals of your main battery generated by the alternator in your vehicle. That alternator current will fluctuate uh, with the vehicle and this will charge directly off that current, just like the battery in your car does. Okay, now the big difference to this machine is that this one will take the current that uh, is available from the battery when the vehicle is on and it will adjust it to a DC, to, uh, DC output of 25 amps at a constant 14.4 volts. Now that comes into play uh, specifically when you're looking at the type of battery that you're trying to shoot, uh, charge with this system. Uh, both of them can handle just about any type of battery that we're using in our vehicles, whether it's a, a wet, a gel, an AGM, uh, but the DC-25 power pack can also handle lithium, both lithium ion and LIFO uh, batteries in this solution. Uh, this power pack does not work too well with the lithium products. It's not designed for charging of those uh, of that nature. So that's where this one shines a little bit more. There's also a difference in price. 
This one's roughly half the price of, the, of our green machine here. Uh, so that comes into play as well too. So it really depends on what your goals and plans are, uh, how much solar you're gonna be using, if you're gonna be using solar, are you gonna be going with the lithium uh, battery solution or not? What is the output of your vehicle uh, as far as the voltage of the output? In general terms, and there's a lot more information that we can provide on our website. In general terms, if your vehicle is putting out more than 13.9 volts uh, to the auxiliary battery, this is an excellent solution and will charge your batteries actually quicker than this one will up to a certain point. But if your alternator is not putting out a constant 13.9 plus volts, this would be a better way to go about things because this one will take that lower voltage output, pull it into its little magic box and push out a voltage of 14.4 at about 25 amps. So uh, I hope that helped uh, solve some of the, the similarities and, and differences questions. If you have any more questions at all, please give us a holler here at equippedone.com. We'd be more than happy to help you with your questions. Again, I'm Paul May. I appreciate your time.